Thanks, Gilbert, for bringing up security, which introduces our next speaker. Uh, Dr. Reza Kurtmola is an assistant professor in computer science here at NJIT. Reza research is on security of cloud services, as well as applied cryptography and the security of wireless network. Reza, we're really happy you're here uh, helping to protect NJIT networks. Uh, Reza er, has received the very prestigious NSF National Science Foundation Career Award and is a member of the Association of Computing Machinery, the ACM, and the IEEE Computing Society. Prior to joining NJIT, uh, Reza worked as a postdoctoral research as associate in the Department of Computer Science at Purdue University and a research intern at Bell Labs Research. Reza holds a PhD in computer science from the Johns Hopkins University. Thank you, Reza. Oh, let me get his up. Okay. Thank you, Katia. Um, okay, so uh, basically, John and Gilbert really made it easy for me for this first slide. Uh, so why would one use uh, cloud services? Well, for a few reasons, obviously reduced costs, uh, no need to set up and manage uh, an IT infrastructure. You have scalability and uh, elasticity, which is good for uh, to meet uh, peaks in uh, you know, business uh, requirements. Uh, you can view uh, cloud services as, uh, you know, as a commodity, like any other utility, such as heat or electricity. You only get to pay for what you use. Uh, you also uh, have ubiquitous access to you know, cloud resources from anywhere, and this list could go on. Now, the question is, uh, is there any reason why would, uh, someone would not use a cloud service provider? Uh, or a related question, is the cloud uh, for everyone? And I could find at least one reason that uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, should make you a little bit cautious when you use uh, the cloud. Uh, that is security, which has been identified as uh, one of the main concerns for widespread adoption of cloud services. Uh, the reality today is that uh, data owners uh, have to fully and unconditionally trust cloud service providers uh, with the security and reliability of their data, uh, for example. Uh, and this means that uh, you know, the cloud is not necessarily suitable for uh, everyone and for every application. For example, applications that handle sensitive data or that uh, require long-term uh, reliability. Um, why should we be concerned? Well, let me give you some uh, examples of uh, reports related to lost data or service un un unavailability. Uh, for example, uh, uh, the first one here in this list, power outages. Um, earlier this year in June, uh, there was a storm which affected uh, Amazon's uh, North Virginia data center, and uh, for a few hours, uh, companies like uh, uh, Netflix and Instagram were, were down, basically, because they are relying on Amazon's cloud services uh, platform. Uh, actually, this is what uh, Netflix Twitter uh, sent a Twitter message uh, at that time uh, when uh, the website was down. Um, uh, like Gilbert mentioned, uh, you have also media failures. You know, um, soft, uh, hardware can fail. Uh, you can have software bugs. Here I can give you another example. Uh, in January last year, uh, if you were one of the unlucky, well, lucky or unlucky, um, Gmail users, uh, I think it was about 150,000, uh, you would wake up in the morning and you would see all your emails gone. Um, Basically, this was due to a bug in the uh, update uh, software, which basically somehow affected multiple copies. Uh, in the end, they were able to recover the data, but uh, they had to use uh, backup tapes. So, uh, I also have other reasons uh, uh, for you know uh, for, for which data can be lost: attacks from outside or from the inside. Uh, you know, cloud uh, service provider may have bad data management practices. They may be negligent, that, that could be administrator errors. Uh, and all of this have been reported, you know, uh, and we know about them, but what about unreported incidents, data that has been leaked and we don't know about it or lost? Uh, so the, one, the, uh, one other problem today is the lack of transparency of the cloud infrastructure. Um, so uh, really, you know, many of the cloud providers today are, um, the platforms are opaque 
Um, there is little, uh, uh, they don't really allow external auditors to uh, inspect the level of uh, redundancy and protection that they uh, employ. Uh, and you know, for uh, some applications, all of this uh, poses an unacceptable risk. Uh, and of course, the last question here on this slide, uh, which I don't really have a good answer for, what happens if a cloud service provider goes out of business? What happens with your data? Uh, okay. Uh, well, some, uh, you know, what if we look at the service level agreements? What, what do they guarantee? Well, if you look in the details at the fine print, uh, really all these uh, cloud service providers, they promise uh, best effort. You know, we'll uh, try to do our best effort. We'll uh, replicate this data three times. We'll, uh, you know, do all this and do that. But really, uh, if the data is lost, you know, we are sorry, there's no liability there. Um, basically, they tell the clients that in the end, you are still responsible to protect and back up your own data. Uh, and actually, I think more recently, uh, uh, providers like Amazon, uh, they actually try to reimburse you proportional to the amount of lost data. So, you know, if you lose one gig gigabyte of data, they'll give you one dollar for it, the exact, uh, because that's how much, uh, you know, one gigabyte of data is worth to them regardless of the actual value of the data. The data may be worth a million to you, but hey, you get one dollar back. Um, so the reality is that data owners really can outsource the data, but they cannot outsource the liability. Uh, and again, the conclusion of this slide that pretty much clients are still responsible for application level data security and reliability. Uh, and here I put a slide, uh, this is uh, from NIST's uh, Cloud Computing Technology Roadmap, they have this, uh, you know, uh, uh, the various responsibilities between uh, cloud consumer and the cloud provider. There are various ways of, you know, offering cloud services, this IaaS, PaaS, and SaaS, which stand for infrastructure, platform, or uh, software as a service. And depending on, uh, you know, who is in uh, charge of uh, taking care of the operating system, the middle layer, application layer, uh, of course, the security um, uh, responsibility between the cloud consumer and the cloud provider will be different as well. Uh, a few additional uh, security-related concerns are related to legal and compliance requirements. How do I know where my data is stored? Even if I know, how can I really, uh, sometimes I cannot really control where it is stored because, you know, uh, uh, if they make, uh, multiple replicas, backups, actually replicas of my data, maybe they may store them in, you know, in uh, different uh, jurisdictions, other countries, how do I know which laws apply, the local laws, do they, maybe not. Um, another question is how can one verify that a cloud service provider complies with regulations? And here there are all kinds of certification standards, but the reality is that, uh, unfortunately, all this cloud technology evolves too fast uh, for legal and compliance requirements to keep up um, the pace. Uh, also in the cloud, you have an increased attack surface because you know, for all of this to, to be possible, uh, there are many technologies that are put together. Um, and also what is uh, another uh, uh, source of attack, which is kind of unique to cloud computing, is from this sharing of resources, this co-residence with other users, you may end up using the same machine with your competitor. Um, and uh, I will say more about this in the next slide. And really the question is, you know, why should I put my private information in the cloud? And uh, there's no one answer to this question. If your main uh, driver is to reduce the costs, then maybe this is okay. But uh, if you are uh, dealing with the very sensitive data, maybe it's not a good idea to put uh, to, to, to rely on the cloud. Uh, and I want, wanted to uh, quickly mention this specific uh, you know attack, which is kind of uh, specific to, to the cloud. Uh, the fact that co-residence may lead to cross virtual machine information leakage. So there has been some research which uh, in which basically the attacker uh, can map the internal uh, cloud infrastructure. Uh, uh, they can identify where a target virtual machine is uh, likely to reside on which machine, and they are, uh, you know, through some uh, uh, probabilistic, th through several attempts, they may be able to uh, instantiate new virtual machines on the same uh, hardware with the target, and that can lead to all kinds of uh, information leakage through what is called a side channel attack, because you're now using the same resources with 
you know, with the target, so you can find out uh, information that should remain secret from the, you know, your, let's say, your competitor application based on uh, those resources that are shared, such as the memory, the disk, the network interface, the CPU load, the, the CPU cache usage, all that, that kind of stuff. Uh, so uh, my, actually my uh, last two slides. Uh, so all of these, you know, uh, are problems. Uh, is there any hope? Uh, can we actually give back uh, some of the control back to the data owners? And I will just uh, briefly go through some uh, recent developments that mostly come from the academic community. Um, so usually, right, uh, one way to, um, you know, if you are handling sensitive data is to basically encrypt it before you put it in the cloud. Unfortunately, if you do that, you won't be able to do much with it. Well, but recently, because of some uh, recent developments, uh, uh, it turns out that it may be possible uh, to actually leverage the cloud and do some computations directly on the encrypted data so that the cloud provider doesn't really understand what's behind that, but it still does it for you. Um, also in that uh, space, um, it turns out you can also do something uh, that's called searching on encrypted data, right? So what is stored in the cloud is uh, encrypted, but uh, you can still somehow leverage the cloud to selectively re retrieve pieces of the data without really revealing what's encrypted, what is what is it that you're searching for? So pretty much you're trying to hide as much as possible from the cloud provider. Um, also, there are uh, techniques uh, that allow one to check the integrity of the data uh, for the purpose of ensuring long-term reliability. And this is especially relevant for, uh, in the case of archival, right, where you try to uh, store the data in the cloud for long term. Uh, so if, uh, let's say you try to store this for, I don't know, 10 years, and at the end uh, you try to get back the data and you realize that some of it is corrupted or lost, it may be too late by the time. You know, what do you do then? So it may be useful to have some kind of way to periodically check uh, that all of the data that you have initially stored is still there. And if you do that and find out sooner, you, you know, it, there may be ways for you to mitigate that. Uh, and finally, uh, there are also some attempts to, uh, to try to establish where this data is actually located, right? So establishing the location of the data uh, has been a recent uh, research uh, direction. Uh, now, one caveat, all of these are kind of in the early stages, more research is required. You cannot simply apply this on, you know, on uh, current uh, platform, uh, cloud platforms because they will uh, uh, incur a significant uh, performance in, uh, uh, degradation in performance. Uh, and another quest related question is, you know, what, what incentives do cloud service providers to adopt any of these, uh, you know, uh, techniques? Uh, it could be uh, a business opportunity for them because it could give them an edge over the competition, right? So it could be a business differentiator, but look, I'm not an expert in that field, so I don't know. Um, and my last slide actually is I wanted to point out uh, in, uh, so, by the way, NIST stands for National Institute for uh, Standards and Technology, and this is their uh, view of the uh, cloud computing actors. And there, I circle in red, there's this entity. So in addition to the cloud consumer, the cloud provider, the, uh, there's also something called auditor, right? So, which is supposed to be an entity, independent external entity that uh, does, does all kinds of checks. Uh, about how the cloud operates and what kind of protection um, and uh, redundancy it employs. So I think that that, that entity is actually quite important to uh, solve some of these uh, security issues that I have pointed out earlier in my presentation. And I think that is pretty much all I had to say. Thank you.